guys. Today I want to do yet another paracord tricks video and this one's going to be a little bit different. As you guys can see, I mixed up the venue uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to test this out to make sure so this one, wasn't I wanted just to test it out and make sure that it wasn't just going to be uh, fake or not work because a lot of these things I do, of course, are all like prototypes that I just come up with my mind and think they're really awesome ideas to try. So I want to test, or I pretty much always test these ideas out before bringing them to the camera. And so I decided, to, while I was already going out, to test out this. So this is, in case you guys can't already tell, a paracord dangler for knives. If you guys are unfamiliar, danglers are things that you attach to your belt to make the knife dangle essentially like this. So if you're looking at it, uh, on your belt, theoretically, you would string your belt through here and then the knife would sit like this and it can move independently like that. Danglers have already been used and are quite well known in the bushcraft community. Uh, a lot of LT Wright knives and quite a few custom knives come with danglers. They're really nice. I particularly am one that really likes danglers, but not everyone does. So. So this trick isn't for everyone, but if you guys are interested in making danglers for your own knives that don't necessarily come with danglers, like this one, uh, here's an awesome trick. I'm going to show you guys how to make this dangler. Testing, I did kind of work out. I first started out just running one single piece like this, and then another single piece like this, and that was really bad. There was too much movement uh, in this piece, and it would wiggle like this a lot, especially when running or jumping. Uh, but this way that I've worked out, it is extremely stable. And on the walk out here, I did running, jumping, and uh, just the general things that I do uh, to get out here. Uh, so but in those types of more difficult tasks or more physically demanding tasks, I found that this was extremely stable, especially this connection point here uh, to the belt is extremely stable. This, of course, like it should, pivots around. Um, but overall, it is extremely stable, just as stable as any leather dangler out there. So, to get into why you would want a dangler for those who don't know much about danglers or who are not seriously convinced in their awesomeness, uh, generally the reason why I like them the most uh, is that they put the knife lower on your belt. So, as I mentioned, if this is where your belt's going to be, naturally the knife is going to be several inches lower. And why I like this is uh, there's a natural extension of the hand, and generally I make these to that natural extension. So when this is sitting on your belt, it, uh, it sits far higher, and this is how most knives are. Uh, it sits far higher, and I find that your hand is often more cramped and more and it's more uncomfortable to unsheath the knife from a position like this, whereas if you find that the knife is around three or four inches lower at your natural extension, it's more comfortable to undo the knife and pull it out. That I've been running danglers for a long time, so uh, I really do like this dangler style uh, or where it just sits more naturally. Secondly, the other part that I like about it is that it allows, as you can see, and you can probably tell, it allows more freedom for the knife or more independent movement from your body. And this is actually almost the opposite thought of strapping a knife to your thigh and having it move exactly with you. Uh, this is where you're allowing the knife to move as independently as it wants. And there are definitely applications where strapping your knife to your thigh and having it rig rigidly follow you is a very nice thing, especially in more combative situations, but in the woods it's really nice to have the dangler move independently from you. It's also nice if you do a lot of kneeling, like I am now, uh, the knife sits exactly down, so it always, regardless to your hip position, the knife is always sitting like this. Uh, and I really do prefer to grip the knife like this instead of trying to grip it from some sideways grip. Uh, as if it was affixed to your belt or if it was affixed to your thigh, it would definitely be, be completely sideways. So, naturally more independent 
and I do like that for many reasons. Uh, I won't get into too many more reasons of why you guys should use danglers. Uh, there are many more reasons if you guys think about it. I'm sure you'll definitely end up loving danglers, uh, but if not, then, like I said, this video probably will not interest you. Now to get on to the actual build. I've kept you guys waiting long enough. And so the actual build, I'm actually going to pull the knife out just so uh, this isn't in here blocking the view uh, of this build. This purple paracord, just so you guys know, has absolutely no relevance to this particular build. I just put that on there uh, for extra paracord and to add a little lanyard at the bottom. Uh, but the purple paracord has nothing to do with this. Uh, so the pieces that do matter are this one, this gray piece here, and all this is, this essentially is the stand-in for the D-ring. Uh, you could actually use a real D-ring for this. I wanted to do this entirely out of paracord because this is, after all, paracord tricks. So I want to do this entirely out of paracord for that. Uh, and like I said, this uh, piece of gray paracord is just a stand-in for a D-ring or uh, can be used in that manner and all it is as you guys can see is just a piece of paracord I think this is around four or five inches long and then just I put a simple overhand knot in it and then to make it look more aesthetically pleasing uh, I just kind of took that underhand or overhand rather uh, knot and hit it under there so that it just gets more of a natural kind of triangular shape. So the next piece, this is actually where it gets more complex. Like I said, I originally did this kind of thing uh, where it was just one strand of paracord but shaped like this. That did not work at all and this was the way I found the most stable uh, carry for this uh, when I was just kind of testing it out back at the house. Um, there are many ways to do this. I was thinking of different ways you could do this. There are more permanent and less permanent ways, but I think this is the most uh, medium kind of compromise in the background. <laughs> but uh, how I did this was a little bit untraditional in how I usually do things. Uh, one, I made the double strand core, and of course I just wrapped that with uh, a Cobra stitch or Solomon stitch. Uh, I did do a Solomon stitch uh, just for the fact that this is more of a use item and less of a kind of showy item. So you could do this with any other style of weave, but I don't really think it'd be worth it just for the fact that this is gonna be an item that's being used more than it's being shown. Uh, so I just did a normal Solomon stitch and I found that worked well. And then when I came to the end, what I did, or actually when I began, I left about a half inch gap here. It'll be a little bit difficult to see, but a half inch gap or loop here and the reason why I did that was to make a loop large enough for two strands of paracord to fit through, but not large enough uh, for a knotted piece to fit back through. So at the end of the weave, what I did was I took the two pieces of paracord, ran them through this smaller hole, and made a simple overhand knot that was large enough for it to not come back through that hole. And I like that for the fact that um, that uh, for the fact that if you ever wanted to take this off again you could just undo this knot and you could take this off so it's more removable this way uh, and this was the most removable way I could think without it being too removable because another part that I was thinking about was that I didn't want the knife if this was the way it was affixed to your belt I didn't want the knife to come off should I fall or should I be running, or should I be jumping, uh, or doing any more physical activity. I didn't want the knife or to have the potential for the knife to easily fall out. So that was the way I affixed this to the uh, sheath. And I think, like I said, this is the best compromise for you to still be able to remove this piece should you ever want to, but you won't, don't necessarily run the risk of this falling off should you have to uh, run or should you fall down a hill or whatever happens the last thing you want to happen is have your primary belt knife uh, come off and you lose it guys hope you enjoyed that quick mod um i really think this turned out far better than actually i was expecting it i was really excited when i was uh, coming out here just to see how little movement there was and just how stable this was on the belt i mean this is extremely stable for being something that uh, I wasn't necessarily sure how it was going to turn out, but it turned out really well. And 
I was super excited about that because like I said, I really do love danglers, but unfortunately not every knife comes with a dangler. So this is a really good way to, if you have a sheath similar to this, uh, or not necessarily similar to this, but if it just has a, you know, belt loop, uh, if a sheath that just has a belt loop like this one, uh, you can easily add uh, a couple pieces of paracord and not only do you have more paracord should you ever need it in a survival situation but it does make actually a really good dangle it comments yes i do know that this is a sog seal pop elite sheath with a tops field craft uh, i am not only against the uh tops field craft sheath uh, i still have it and i use it occasionally but for in the woods uh, the problem with it for me is, one, I dislike how in an upright position, how uh, high the knife sits. Once again, it sits actually even higher than this. Um, and two, the steel, spring steel clip on it is actually not large enough. I use an Alpenlore belt, and Alpenlore belts are pretty thick, which is great uh, for belts, but not so great when you're trying to attach things. So I use this sheath for the Topps Fieldcraft because its original sheath does not work for me. And I found uh, through lots of testing that the Sog Seal Pop sheath uh, works perfectly for the Topps Fieldcraft. You guys can see how well it sits in there. This is a absolute perfect fit for it. And so I actually bought a Sog Seal Pop sheath just for this guy. So that's what the sheath and this modification. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. And if you guys do have a Topps Fieldcraft, I would highly encourage you guys check this uh, sheath system out. I personally like this sheath more than the leather and the Kydex sheaths Topps offers. No offense to Topps. Uh, they're great sheath systems, but I just like this one more. Anyways, guys, I'm out.